Welcome to An Evening in the Upstate with the Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston. Your hostess for the evening is Sister Pamela Smith. Merry Christmas and glory to God in the highest. Hello, I'm Sister Pamela Smith and welcome to St. Anthony of Padua Church in beautiful downtown Greenville, South Carolina as we bring you our annual Christmas show. A special note about this church, it began a massive renovation as the pandemic began, and with the grace of God, it was able to continue. You'll be seeing some of the beautiful sights of this church in our program today. We wanna to call special attention to the icon that exists right over the tabernacle, the image of the Holy Spirit, a replica of a stained glass window in the Vatican. This year, we've put together a COVID-19 sensitive celebration for you and your whole family. We went into our vault and pulled out some of the best segments of our past seven years. There will be singing, inspirational messages, a Christmas story, and a holiday recipe shared by our very own Bishop, Most Reverend Robert Guglielmoni, Bishop of Charleston. The Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, appointed Bishop Guglielmoni spiritual leader of our diocese in 2009. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston is comprised of the entire state of South Carolina, in which there are 94 Catholic parishes, 20 mission churches, 34 Catholic schools, two Catholic hospitals, an assisted living facility, and 11 Catholic charity centers across the state. Now, Bishop Guglielmoni will turn 75 years old on December 30th, and he will submit a letter of resignation as required by the Vatican. 75 is the official age of retirement for Catholic bishops. December 30th is also the close of our bicentennial celebration and the anniversary date of the arrival of our first bishop, John England, who came to South Carolina from Ireland. It took him more than two months to come by sea. Now, commemorating 200 years of history has had its challenges because of COVID but we plan to share our final event with you online. Bishop Guglielmoni will offer a special mass at the cathedral, which you can watch on December 30th at noon on the diocese's Facebook page and YouTube channel. A man of peace, love, and an advocate for social justice for over 11 years, Bishop Guglielmoni has provided South Carolina with fearless leadership, and he has accomplished many initiatives that have built up the church in our state. Of his most enduring accomplishments, education is foremost and has always been a focal point of his ministry. He was a teacher before he became a priest. Bishop Guglielmoni initiated a comprehensive plan to strengthen Catholic schools throughout the state, and he fully supported and aided the growth of Catholic schools even while others around the country were consolidating and closing. Today, a special curriculum is being developed to provide diversity, equity, and inclusion education and resources, especially to our secondary Catholic schools. And now it's time for a Christmas message from our bishop. Come, Lord Jesus. As we look forward to celebrating the birth of our Savior, we cannot help but reflect on all that we have experienced over this past year. And though it feels as if 2020 has been more difficult with its sickness and separation, injustice and anger, worry and loss, we are also reminded that there is a positive emotion we can share, hope. It is the hope of expectation, not of things, but of potential. The emotion of hope is an assurance that comes from the birth of the child Jesus. When Mary, through God, brought into our world a small and helpless infant, our existence in this life was transformed with hope. The Gospels tell us that the Christ child, who held the divine nature of God, grew and became strong as a human being. In his growth, he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. When he was 12, his parents found their son in the temple, listening to other teachers and asking them questions. 
The Gospel said that all who heard him were amazed. Following the example of those early disciples, we must also listen like the children of God. We must hear the teachings of Jesus with humility, with prayer, with devotion. Sometimes when we feel threatened, we react with anger, impatience, sometimes pride. We lash out. If we truly are to be followers of Jesus Christ, we must temper that fear with prayer and work to extend the peace shown to us through the birth of the Christ child. If we are to be made worthy of the promises of Christ for the joys of heaven, then we must pray for and cultivate the virtue of humility. Without such modesty, spiritual development remains an unattainable goal. This Christmas, let us remember that there is joy to be found in all that God has given. It is the wisdom we acquire in this life about overcoming our sin that prepares us for the kingdom of God. We stand at the threshold of eternity, but until then, we must work toward it with hope. Let us give ourselves over to Christ and trust in God's goodness. Let us pray, thy will be done in me, O glorious God. O come, O come, Emmanuel, a blessed Christmas. In addition to education, Bishop Guglielmoni has led the effort to build more Catholic churches in the diocese. Our beautiful missions and churches are places where we live out not only our faith, but also the call from the Pope and our Bishop to be missionary disciples. Our beautiful places of worship stand as an example of God's love. The richness of our diversity is prevalent in many aspects of our Catholic worship. In spite of the pandemic, we continue to join together as a Catholic community and to serve our brothers and sisters with an open heart. We do this live, we do it live stream, we do it virtually. Now together, you and I will overcome the many challenges we face due to COVID-19 and help heal our land. Why? Because we come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord and trusting in God's holy word. He's never failed us yet. As a member of the Sisters of St. Cyril and Methodius, I've been blessed with a ministry that has allowed me to travel and minister with the people of many of these beautiful places that we've looked at today. Our structures, our churches and schools stand tall as proud examples of what can be done when we all work together for the common good. Do I hear an amen? Now, what I have here is my latest book titled A History of the Diocese of Charleston, State of Grace, which explores our rich history as people of God in this diocese. You can order the book from our diocesan office at www.charlestondiocese.configio.com. Now, as we pray and hope for God's blessings on each of us in the new year 2021, we cannot ignore the struggle we have all faced and are still facing at the end of 2020. If you're having a struggle due to these challenging times, Catholic Charities has a free service that can help you better cope. It's an app called Sister Hope. Let's take a look at Sister Hope and see what she can do. Since the COVID-19 pandemic has started, it has taken a toll on many of our people in our communities. I have seen firsthand the added stress and worry on our clients' faces as they come through our drive through food pantries. These difficult times have drastically increased stress and anxiety. In response, Catholic Charities of South Carolina is providing a new ministry called Sister Hope. Sister Hope is a free chat service that provides encouragement and coping strategies on how to better deal with everyday stress and anxiety. Sister Hope, supported by chatbot technology, 
is 100% anonymous and confidential, available for free 24-7 and in two languages, English and Spanish. It is research-based and has proven to help over 13 million people worldwide. It's just uh, another way that we, as the Diocese of Charleston, through Catholic Charities, uh, want to reach out and do what we can during this difficult time that people are experiencing such difficulties. If you have any further questions, please visit our website at www.charitiessc.org. Coming up next is our annual message from Father J. Scott Newman, pastor at St. Mary's Catholic Church in downtown Greenville and dean of the Upstate Deanery. Father has some words of faith and hope for the new year. Following his inspirational comments, we will take you to Cook Station in downtown Greenville for a special encore showing of a cooking segment featuring our very own Bishop Guglielmoni. He will demonstrate how to make a wonderful seafood pasta dish. Hmm, Guglielmoni, cooking pasta. <laughs> Sounds Italian to me. In the past year, we have endured a global pandemic, violence in our streets, and a bitterly contested election that revealed a deeply divided nation. 2020 has been a dark and difficult year, and we are all in need of light and hope, exactly the gifts that Christmas brings. My earliest memory of hearing the Christmas gospel is not from the church, but from the television special called Charlie Bound Christmas, which has been shown every year since 1965. Despite the approach of Christmas, Charlie Brown is dejected that everything he does is a disaster, and he cries out in despair that he doesn't know what Christmas is about. Then his friend Linus steps up, letting his security blanket fall to the ground, and with radiant faith, he proclaims the birth of the Messiah as recorded by St. Luke. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. To you and to yours, Merry Christmas. And now it's time for Cooking with Bishop Guglielmoni. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Cook Station, which is located in the west end of downtown Greenville. I'm Bishop Robert Guglielmoni, and I want to thank Kelly Colasiopo of the Cook Station for allowing this to be my kitchen away from home today. Joining me are my tasters. They have the responsibility of verifying for you that the dish I am about to prepare is simply wonderful. Tasters, please tell our viewers who you are and the name of the parish that you are attending. Hi, I'm Quinn Pham. I'm a member of Our Lady of Love and Mission. Very good. Welcome. And uh, it's good to see you here today. And I'm Cheryl Casper, and I'm visiting from St. Mary of the Lake Parish in New Buffalo, Michigan. And I just heard you made really good food, so I came. My goodness, a long way to come for a dish of pasta. It's going to be worth it. <laughs> I am David Fenn. I am a Franciscan friar. I'm serving for uh, Diocese Charleston. Hello, Bishop. And I wish everyone to have a wonderful Christmas. Kính chúc quý ông bà và anh chị em một mùa Giáng sinh vui vẻ và an lành. Well, thank you. It's good of you to be here. I wish I knew a little more Vietnamese and I could understand some of what you were saying, but we'll figure that out. Probably we learn a little bit later. Yes. <laughs> I'm Mara Trujillo. I'm a member of St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church in Stinsonville. Um, I'm happy to be here and Feliz Navidad. 
Well, welcome. It's great to have you here. And uh, St. Mary Magdalene is the place I usually stay when I come up and spend some time in Greenville. In our Catholic tradition, uh, the celebration of Christmas begins actually on Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day is the day that most folks really celebrate. For many people, it's a day in which family and friends gather in someone's home to share a big meal together. Many of our holiday guests will remain a few days afterwards, and of course there are the holiday guests that simply remain for quite a while and somehow just don't seem to want to go home. Anyway, on these days after Christmas, you may want to consider serving a dish that's light, quick, and easy to make for a large group. I have the perfect dish for you. It's my seafood linguine, and with a name like Guglielmoni, believe me, I know pasta. Let's begin. First of all, we have the ingredients that uh, are here um, uh, on our, um, uh, our, our countertop, okay? It's uh, olive oil, lemon, garlic, of course. How can any Italian cook without garlic? Uh, chopped onion, some small zucchini, six a large uh, shrimp peeled and divined. Uh, we could uh, uh, also look at uh, six to eight uh, bay scallops. Of course, there is always the possibility of using um, larger scallops and cutting them up, uh, crab meat, uh, Italian parsley, butter, uh, some white wine, Parmesan cheese to taste, and of course the linguine. I would uh, certainly like to, um, to uh, thank uh, Ms. Mary Ann Nugian at Jojo Seafood Market in Greenville for supplying us uh, with this wonderful seafood. Uh, I do need a, uh, a spoon here to sort of move this butter around. Ah, you hear the sizzling starting? That's a sign that perhaps it's just a little bit too high. All right, the next step, of course, is to get our garlic in. And to get our onion. Give that a good And we just keep that moving right along. And of course, the zucchini needs a little bit of time to cook. So we're going to take some of the zucchini and put it right in. Okay, the idea, of course, is, is to keep this cooking at a low flame here uh, until you start to see the, uh, the garlic, uh, the onion, and the uh, zucchini starting to brown, indicating that they're, that they're pretty much cooked. Uh, to the extent that you want. At this point, you can put parsley in later, but I always like to put parsley in at this point because what happens is that the parsley adds, um, oh, you hear that sizzle. It not only adds a beautiful scent, but it also adds some, some necessary color that will also assist us later. At this point, you can see where everything is ready and it's time to go with the seafood. Um, obviously, I like to put the shrimp in first. And then, of course, your deveined scallops. And then, of course, our crab meat. Now, of course, the key with the seafood and the key with pasta, of course, is not to overcook it. Shrimp does not need to be overcooked at all, and uh, neither do any of the other ingredients here, because the shrimp becomes like rubber if it's overcooked. Okay. Everything's all mixed up. Now the classic ingredient, white wine. I don't know where you are if you can sense that scent of the white wine, but what a difference it, it makes in terms of the, the overall invitation through all of the senses. It looks beautiful, but it also smells beautiful.
Well, it looks as though we're just about set here. However, <clears throat> there's one ingredient that's still missing, and that is the pasta. So uh, if, uh, if you don't mind, I will go get the pasta, which has been prepared. And um, we will take the pasta and place it in a wonderful serving dish. Oop. And now, oh, perfect. Of course, as I say, an Italian dish without some Parmesan cheese. And according to taste, not everybody is, is into the red pepper, but uh, it, it really adds a little bit. So I'm just going to put a dash in. But of course, that's up to your own taste, depending on whether or not you like a little spice or, or not, depending on how much of the red pepper you put in. And so here we have mm. this absolutely magnificent dish, which is not very uh, time consuming in terms of preparation. And of course, if you have a house full of guests, uh, obviously you use more linguine, more shrimp, more crab meat, etc. But you can adjust that to taste. It's really a very easy dish to make. Tasters, are you ready? Yes. Como decimos en Puerto Rico, esto está delicioso. That's in Spanish, huh? In Vietnamese tradition, they say non hoa. Thank you, Father Newman, for your timely message. And thank you, Bishop, for making me want to eat some of that Italian seafood pasta right now. And now it's time for our traditional Christmas story, If I Were a Goose, as told by Franciscan friar, Father Patrick Tuttle, a previous pastor here at St. Anthony's. So gather the family around for this heartwarming story with an enlightening ending. Once upon a time, there was a family that lived on a farm. And the family living on the farm experienced a difficult winter. It was such a difficult winter that the snow was not only falling like this, it was blowing, just blowing by making big drifts, and it was Christmas Eve, and the mother of the family said to the father of the family, honey, we need to get ready to go to church. And he said, well, the storm is kind of rough out there. I think I might stay home and take care of the farm while you go to the church with the children. And she said, oh, honey, I really would like it if we could all be together as a family in church. He said, yes, yes, I know, but the storm is very bad, and I think I should keep the lights on and the heat on and the fire going because the storm is very bad. She said, okay. So she got the children all dressed up, and they went off to the church. Well, that father was sitting at home, tending the fire and trying to keep the home warm. And do you know he began to hear the strangest thing in the world? All of a sudden he heard And he wondered what that was. And he went to the door and he opened up the door and that snow was just blowing by like that. Just blowing and blowing. And he could barely see anything but he could hear something. Honk, 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 honk. It was geese. They were flying in the blizzard, but they were blind, they couldn't see, and they were actually hitting the side of the barn. And some of them were hitting and dying, and he was thinking, oh, this is awful. Christmas night and all these geese are flying into the barn. I must do something. And he went, got his clothes on, and he went out to the barn. He opened up the doors of the barn, and he turned the light on. And he thought, surely the geese will see the light, and they'll come in out of the storm. But you know, honk, honk, those geese didn't see the light. And they kept hitting the side of the barn. This is terrible, this is terrible. And he ran into the house and he got some of his wife's fresh baked bread. And he thought, this is great, they'll definitely smell this. And so he laid out the bread. He broke the bread and he laid it out in a line to the light. And when he broke the bread and laid it out, he was sure the geese would come and find the bread. But did they find that bread? Oh 
oh my gosh, they kept hitting the side of the barn. It was awful. He was thinking, this is terrible. Oh my gosh, when my wife and children come home, all these geese are going to be dying inside of the barn. This is awful. And he thought, oh my gosh, if only I could become a goose, then I could honk and lead them to the bread and to the light. If only I could become a goose, I could lead them. Do you know that's exactly what God thought when he said, if only I could become a man and lead them to the bread and to the light. Do you know of anybody who became a man like that? Did God become a man? Uh -huh. Who? Jesus. Yes. And that's the reason why we tell this story. Because just like the geese, we can be flopping around sometimes and we don't know what to do and life hurts and, and, and the blizzard is too rough. We can't really see well and we need the light and we need the bread and we need to be guided. And so God sent us his son in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of the cold to lead us to the light of his father's love. And when we follow kind of like our head goose, Jesus, we're safe and with God forever. And the storm won't hurt us. What do you think of the story? Do you understand now why God would become a man? To help us, right? To lead us. Isn't that awesome? Well, I'm hoping that you can also help God by living a good life and leading people to God, because they're in a storm, really, just like that. But with your help and my help, we can bring them where they need to be, God working through us. Amen? Amen. What a great story. Jesus is the light of my world, for sure. What about you? Not only are we praying for an end to the pandemic, but we're also praying for the triumph of justice in our world. That's why we're going back into our vault to revisit an interview with Bree Merritt conducted with Father Michael O'Keary in 2014. The St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School Choir will perform following that interview. St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School is located right outside the doors of the church in which we are filming today. And we'd like to say a special thank you to the pastor, Father Wilbrod Mwapi, and also to the principal, Mary Margaret Martin. Joining us now is Father Michael O'Carey, pastor of St. Martin de Porres Parish and school in Columbia. Father Michael is also the vicar for black Catholics in the Diocese of Charleston. Welcome to the show, Father Michael. I'm glad to be here. We're glad to have you. Father Michael, Recognizing the cry and need for social justice in the world, and that today we celebrate Jesus as the savior of the world, is there a correlation between the two that will help us envision hope for a world of peace and understanding? Interesting. Um, it's important to understand justice and peace from the way the world understands it and from the way Christ wants it to be given. The justice of the world could be good for the world, but sometimes they may not really correlate with the way Christ wants Christ's justice to happen. This is about the coming of Christ. It's not just an empty celebration. There's a call for people to change the way they look at things. Maybe to start doing things the way that they will conform to the way Christ wants us to do things. Think about justice. Think about equality. These are not human qualities. These are qualities that are really divine qualities. So until and unless we have these qualities enshrined into the way Christ wants us to have them, then it will only be mere tolerance and the way that people give to them. So it's important that we, we look at what Christ wants we look at what the coming of Christ is. Look at all the readings that have been going on for the past few weeks. The lamb will eat with the lion. Justice and peace shall kiss. Somebody has to think deeper into these uh, concepts that 
come out from the Bible during these seasons, our, this, especially during the season of Christmas and the season of Advent. And this is what Christmas is about, when the reign of Christ will come and people will start to see things the way Jesus wants us to see things. Equality will become equity. So it is not about equality, because equality in the human version is not the standard of God's equality. Equity is justice that comes from God. Now you are not giving people their rights, their due, what they want. You are giving to them the way it will conform with what Christ wants. Thank you, Father Michael, for being with us today. My pleasure. Merry Christmas. Wish you the same. The St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School Mixed Choir in Greenville is up next. That concludes our 2020 Christmas show. Thank you for sharing part of your holiday with us. Good night to all. May 2021 bring us health, happiness, and the blessings of our Lord. And Happy New Year.